My father was a minister, and we always went to the convention. And this particular one was the one um, that the fundamentalists took over. So um, I remember hearing names like Paige Patterson and um, hearing stories about fundamentalists being bussed in so they could vote. And hearing, um, you know, adults get up screaming at each other and getting really upset. And as my father was a moderate, he had a lot of very strong opinions about that. And so I didn't realize at the time what was happening. And I didn't realize at the time that it actually had, had a history. That it was not just Southern Baptists that were dealing with it. It was... Presbyterians, Methodists, other thing, other denominations. Most of the articles that I could find were about Presbyterians. In fact, there was a article in the Redwood Gazette from June 2nd, 1926 that mentioned a Reverend Albert Cromey, pastor of a Presbyterian church, has been barred from his pulpit by an order from the state presbytery on a charge of extreme fundamentalism. The order followed a controversy of several weeks. And it, that one reminded me of when, um, let's see what year, 1994, when Russell Dilday, who was the pastor of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, was um, locked out of his office for not being a fundamentalist. So these things have been happening for a long time. There's an article called um, The Churches Stand Firm Against Modernism, which is the Cumberland Presbyterians support dry enforcement and strict Sunday laws. And that one is talking about um, supporting not having alcohol solved, served on, or actually being able to be bought on Sundays. And it ends with the Committee on Education dealing with the question of fundamentalists briefly but strongly, re reaffirming the belief in the virgin birth of Christ, the origin of man as told in the book of Genesis, things like that. And, you know, when it comes to the pastor being expelled, in another article that I had entitled Seeks Plain Ruling About Modernism from the New York Times, a liberal is actually quoted as saying, we may not agree with the fundamentalists in their interpretation of the Bible, but we recognize their right to remain in the church and to interpret it as they think true. So, it seems like some people tried to get along and some did not, which is actually what happened in the Southern Baptist Convention also. So, this week has been interesting. It has um, brought back a lot of memories of my dad, which passed away a few years ago, and great times at conventions, and just... Um, times where I went and actually had lunch with Adrian Rogers at Ridgecrest, not even realizing who he was. So this week has um, made me really try to embody or recognize the need for objectivity when, as historians, we read primary sources and we think about historical events. So I'd love to hear about what y'all think about it and if y'all have any memories like that and what y'all think about um, the whole controversy and is it still going on today? Do you think that the church still argues about that? Or we have we come from one um, 